So we are dealing with problems um, in which it is in general difficult to get the exact solution, right? So we are dealing with what is called approximation methods in quantum mechanics. And uh, one of the one of the approximation methods in quantum mechanics is one of the approximation methods in quantum mechanics that you're dealing with right now is time independent perturbation theory. Okay. So time independent perturbation theory uh, is predicated, predicated on the fact that I can separate the Hamiltonian into a unperturbed part and a small perturbation, which I have called lambda times h tilde in this particular equation. And the uh, formalism here is to expand out the eigenstates and the eigenenergy of the complete Hamiltonian. Complete Hamiltonian means h0 plus the perturbation as a series in a small parameter. Of course, a small parameter, as I explained last time, is just for bookkeeping. We'll get rid of it at the uh, end. So I've, ex I've expanded in this uh, particular page, I've expanded the eigenkits of the full Hamiltonian and the eigenenergies of the full Hamiltonian as a power series in the small parameter. And whenever I have a superscript zero, it means the unperturbed part, N1 and EN1 are the corrections to first order in the perturbation, N2 and EN2 are corrections to the second order in perturbation, and so on and so forth. But as a practical matter, uh, you would almost never be required to calculate second order corrections to the eigenkets. You might be able, uh, there are uh, cases where you have to calculate the second order correction to the eigenenergies, but almost never a case where you have to calculate the second order correction to the eigenkets. So as a practical matter, the things that are useful in this equation that you have to basically understand are this, of course, and this, 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 and this. So these are the things that typically one has to calculate in uh, problems in perturbation theory, okay? okay? So the rest is basically plugging this in in the time uh, independent Schrodinger equation, expanding things out and collecting things term by term. And uh, in the last lecture, we stopped at the point where we collected all the first order terms and we will begin today's lecture at this particular point. So the first order terms of this Hamiltonian are H0 times the correction to the first, uh, first order correction to the nth eigenkit plus the perturbation times N0 equals Now again, uh, sorry, the zero should go here. Not there. Oops. Okay. Whenever I write en zero and en one, a more correct notation would be to put this inside the bracket, where it is very clear that this is not a super superscript, but actually the zeroth order energy. But uh, since it is a little cumbersome to write, I will just follow this notation. Hope it is clear. Okay, so now I need to, what, what do we need to calculate? I need to calculate EN1 and the first order correction. And I already know N0 and EN0. Calculating the first order correction from this equation is actually quite straightforward. All we need to do is project out the N0 component of this equation. Excuse me. Okay. So let's project out the N0 component of this equation. In other words, multiply the above equation by the bra n0. The first term is this. The second term is this. That is the left-hand side. On the right-hand side, I have a 
okay now this part is obviously one because the unperturbed eigenkets are properly normalized and we also know that e0 times n0 is just en0 n0 which means if you look at the first term on the left hand side you have n0 h0 n1 right and the h0 can act on this n0 to give me an en0 times n0 n1 okay so if you plug this in the first term on the left hand side is simply en0 times the overlap of the zeroth order term of the nth eigenket plus the first order correction of the nth eigenket that is the overlap here plus the second term is the perturbation part of the hamiltonian sandwiched between the unperturbed eigenkets in other words the second uh, term is the expectation value of the perturbation in the unperturbed eigenstates on the right hand side you have plus en1 okay and you can clearly see that this cancels this so we have a very neat expression for the first order correction to the nth eigenkets en1 is simply n0 h tilde n0 okay it is the expectation value of the perturbation in the unperturbed eigenkets all right so this is a very important equation so let's box this equation okay so that is how you calculate the eigen uh, in a cor corrections to the eigen energy so if i'm working till first order in perturbation theory i will write en equals en0 which i already know plus en1 plus blah 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 and this is equal to en0 plus n0 h tilde n0 okay now i claimed that uh, the perturbation part has to be small uh, but perturbation is actually an operator so it doesn't make any sense to say an operator is small so what we can actually make a statement about is the matrix elements of the operator so when i say that it's a perturbation i actually mean that the matrix elements of the perturbation part of this hamiltonian between the eigen uh, unperturbed eigen kits this number that you have in the second term as this uh, in this equation is actually small compared to the unperturbed part en0 okay as long as this condition is satisfied then it makes sense to use this expand excuse me all right so that is the correction to the energy what is the correction to the eigen kits so to calculate the correction to the eigen kits i will go back to the same equation again that i have written at the top of the page but this time i'll project it out with a different eigen kit y no so remember that to first order i'm going to write n as n0 plus n1 right plus higher order terms that i don't care about so i need to calculate n1 but notice that n1 is some eigen kit and i can always write this eigen kit as a linear superposition of the unperturbed eigen kits n0 why because i am not changing my hilbert space i am still in the same hilbert space i am not changing the dimensionality of my hilbert space right so these n zeros which are the unperturbed eigen kits which were a complete set of states can still serve as a complete set of states which means that i can write this first order excuse me first order correction to the nth eigen kit as a linear combination of the unperturbed eigen kits okay because m0 form a complete basis and m1 is some i n1 is some i can get and i can always write any i can get as a 
linear superposition of the uh, complete set of basis vectors. Now, since I am calculating the correction to the nth eigenkit, I will denote this coefficient as cm with a bracket n to keep track of which eigenkit I'm talking. So if I calculate these expansion coefficients cmn, I'm done. I know how to calculate n1. How do I calculate the expansion coefficients? Well, this simply means the expansion coefficients is simply the overlap of m0 with n1. So if I calculate these numbers, I'm done. I know what the first order correction to the eigenkits are. Okay. So basically, the problem of calculating the first order corrections to the uh, eigenkits boils down to calculating these numbers. This is the first point. The second point is that in this expansion that you have here, I can write this expansion by taking out the kit that is parallel to n. So I'll explain what this means. So I can write this as m not equal to n cm n m0. Why? The point is, see, remember that, so let us actually uh, give a concrete example. Uh, so uh, it's, it's clear what I'm talking about. Let us say that I'm talking about a three-state system. Okay, example, three-state system. Okay. And let us say that my unperturbed eigenkits are 1, 0, oops, 2, 0, and 3, 0. Now, suppose I add a perturbation, add a perturbation, okay? Now, to first order, I'm claiming that my kit, the first kit is simply to order zero plus some first order correction. Similarly, the kit two is zeroth order plus some first order correction. And the kit three is so on and so forth. Anyway, there's only three I get kits. Now, I'm further claiming that I can write any of these kits either the first order correction of the, the first kit or second kit or third kit as a linear combination of the unperturbed eigenkits. In other words, I'm claiming that, for example, I can write the first order correction to the second eigenkit as a linear combination of C M to M0. Okay, in other words, I'm, I'm, I'm claiming that I can write this as C1 plus C2 plus C3 like this. Okay, this statement is this equation up here. Okay. The second statement that I made was that I can take off all components parallel to the eigenkit that I'm calculating. In other words, I don't have to have this term. I can simply say that this is equal to some one zero plus three zero. I don't have to in, uh, include the direction parallel to the uh, direction in which I'm computing the correction. So I have to justify this statement. To justify this statement, I'll again go back to the first equation that I wrote down. Okay. First order equation. So the first order equation is H0 N1 plus H tilde N0 equals En0 N1 plus En1 N0, which I can rewrite as H0 minus EN0 times N1 equals Oops, sorry. Yeah, this is fine. Okay, is this clear? This is the exact same equation. I've simply clubbed all the uh, N0 kits and the N1 kits together. 
Now, what am I saying? I'm saying that to calculate the correction, first order correction to the nth I can get, I need to expand these first order corrections as a linear combination of the unperturbed eigenkets n0, but I don't have to include the nth direction. I can simply include the other directions. The reason is because I can always shift this n1 by n1 plus some alpha times the same n0. Why? Because if this n1 satisfies this equation, then the shifted n1 also satisfies this equation. If you don't believe me, simply plug this inside the above equation. Now, the, the part that I've added is basically alpha n0. So what does alpha n0 do to this equation? H0, N0, alpha N0. What is this equal to? Well, H0 acting on N0 is simply going to give me EN0 because that is the unperturbed eigen K, eigen energy. So this is simply equal to zero. So this is simply, as far as this equation is concerned, if I shift the first order collections to the nth eigen K by an amount that is proportional to N0, that doesn't really change the equation that I have written here, which means that even if I include the term, for example, in this case, even if I include the C220, it is not going to change this equation. So I might as well take that particular component off. So in this expansion that I'm considering, N, N, N1, so if you look at uh, this equation, I can take off the direction that is parallel to the direction in which I'm computing the correction. Okay, so this is the rationale for taking away that particular component from this general expansion because that particular component doesn't really contribute anything. Okay, so basically, if I write, oops, excuse me, if I write n1 as some m not equal to n. CMN M0, then calculating these expansion coefficients will tell me what this N1 is, and these expansion coefficients are basically the overlap M0, N1. Okay. If there's any questions at this point, please unmute and ask. So basically, I need to compute this overlap. So to compute this overlap, I need to calculate the overlap of M0 with N1, okay? And assuming that M is not equal to M. N. So I'll again go back to this equation and now take the overlap of this equation with M0. So again, look at this exact same equation, H0 N1 plus H tilde N0 equals, excuse me, E N0 N1 plus E N1 N0. Okay, now take the overlap with M0. So M0, 0 N1 plus M0 H tilde N0 equals EN0 M0 N1 plus EN1 M0 N0. Can you please explain why we don't do that overlap again? Okay. So take a look at this equation that I have written as a tick mark. So suppose if in this equation, if I shift N1 by an amount proportional to N0. Okay, in other words, suppose if I write N1 as a linear combination of all terms, then the amount proportional, the amount, in this expansion, the amount proportional to N0 doesn't really contribute to this equation because the left-hand side is simply zero. Do you understand? So there is a freedom in the choice of N1. I can always add any amount that is proportional to that direction, which means in this equation, two, two prime in the three state example that I've written down, I can take any value of C22. It doesn't really matter because that, that portion really cancels out from, the, from this particular equation. So I can use this freedom to subtract off all the components along the two direction that is in this expansion. 
Okay, so I'm using this freedom because the amount of n1 that is along the direction of that particular n0 doesn't really contribute to this equation. I will use this equation to subtract off all the amount of uh, n0, all the amount of n1 that is lying in the direction n0. That is all I'm doing. Okay. Because, so uh, again, to make this very clear, if you substitute this into this equation, you will actually find that the, uh, there is no alpha dependent term. Okay, because alpha dependent term will simply drop out of this equation. Does this make sense? Yes or no? Okay, okay so let's come back to this equation. Since in this equation we have manifestly made m not equal to n, this last term becomes zero. Okay, because these are uh, orthonormal states. If m is not equal to n, this overlap is equal to zero. Now, what is this term? H zero acts on m zero, and this term is e m zero. Excuse me, e m zero times m zero n one. But Notice precisely that this is m0, n1 that we need. Need to find this. Excuse me. It's a cold. So I can rewrite this equation. Excuse me. We can rewrite this equation as E M zero minus E N zero or rather I would rewrite it like this. M zero M one times E N zero minus E M zero equals M zero. Okay. And these are my expansion coefficients. So the expansion coefficients is simply equal to the matrix element of the perturbation within the unperturbed states divided by the energy difference. So which means my corrections, which was m not equal to n, cmn m0, now can be written as the first order corrections is equal to m not equal to n. m0 h tilde n0. Okay. So there's a couple of points to be mentioned here. Since M and N are assumed to be not equal in this expansion, the denominator is safe as long as the energy levels are non-degenerate. If you have two energy levels that are degenerate, then the sum blows up because you are dividing by zero. Okay, so this formula only applies to what is called non-degenerate
unperturbed energy levels. Okay. If you have degeneracy in the unperturbed energy levels, then we have to develop a new formalism uh, called degenerate perturbation theory. So it shouldn't be En minus Em. Uh, yes, it should be En minus Em. So, thank you. En minus. Yep, thank you. Okay, again, this is the first order correction to the eigenkets. So, and this is also an important equation. So, I'll box this equation as well. Okay, so to first order in perturbation theory, I can write my eigenkets as n0 plus n1, which is equal to n0 plus. M zero, okay, and E n is E n zero plus E n one, which is. So these are the first order perturbation theory formulas, okay. As a practical aspect, these are very important formulas because they help you understand what are the effects of new terms added to the Hamiltonian. Okay, now you might have cases where it um, the first order correction to the energy levels is zero, but the first order correction to the, uh, sorry, the first order corrections to the eigen energies is zero, but the first order corrections to the eigen kets is non-zero, and so on and so forth. Um, because remember that the first order correction to the eigen energies depend on the matrix elements, the diagonal matrix elements, okay, of H tilde in the unperturbed basis. The first order correction to the eigen kets depend on the off diagonal elements of H tilde in the unperturbed eigenkets. Because in this case, M0 is not equal to N0. So we are not talking about the diagonal elements of H tilde, but the off diagonal elements of H tilde. So it is certainly possible that the diagonal elements are zero and the off diagonal elements are non-zero um, and so on and so forth. So let us actually work out an example where this is indeed the case. This is actually a very famous example in perturbation theory. Again, this is also an example which actually can be worked out completely, exactly. Uh, so it's actually very illustrative to compare the results of perturbation theory with the results of the exact calculation. So example is a perturbed simple harmonic oscillator. Now I can perturb the simple harmonic oscillator in any which way you want. So the unperturbed Hamiltonian, of course, is p squared over 2m plus 1 half m. And the unperturbed eigenstates, of course, are n0. And you also know that the unperturbed eigenenergies are n, n plus 1 half h bar omega. I don't need a 0 here, I'm sorry. n plus 1 half h bar omega, right? Now I can perturb this, for example, with an alpha cube term and calculate. So I can treat this as a perturbation and calculate the first order corrections to the energies and I get gets. I will leave this to you as a homework. Today I will add an X term. Okay. So let me add, so for example, plus alpha X. So a realistic case where this can arise is if you're looking at a charged harmonic oscillator in an external electric field. So if you're looking at a charged uh, oscillator in an external electrostatic field, obviously the charge will try to align itself in the direction of the electric field, uh, assuming the charge is negative. So for example, alpha can be minus Q V zero X, right? So the perturbation, sorry, not alpha. The perturbation can be minus q v zero x, right? And the force obviously is just q times v. So this is an example of a charged harmonic oscillator in an external electric field with an electrostatic potential v zero. 
this is a simple enough problem even in quantum mechanics because we can solve this exactly how do i solve this exactly well i leave this to you as a homework but the trick is solvable exactly so here's the trick so let uh, i'll go into the position to presentation so i can go into the position to presentation so i can write this hamiltonian as dx square plus one half m omega zero square plus alpha x and look at the potential piece excuse me let's look at the potential piece what is the potential piece v of x in this case is one half right which i can write as one half m omega zero square times x zero square plus two alpha over m omega zero x so you simply complete the square here complete the square okay and if you complete the square you simply have to shift your x to some x plus something and so you can write your v as one half m omega zero square y square plus a constant okay which means all your energy levels will be shifted by this constant that is all so that is the exact solution to this problem so the exact solution to this problem is basically completing the square and figuring out what this constant is but let us actually now do it in perturbation theory and understand uh, what are the results of for example the first order correction second order correction and so on and so forth at least we have developed the first order formalism so let us work out the first order corrections the energies and eigen kits so let us understand the same problem that i can solve exactly using first order results So what is the first order correction to the energy that is equal to n0 h tilde n0 and h tilde in this case is just alpha times x so this is alpha times n0 x n0 okay and if you have developed sufficient familiarity with simple harmonic oscillator you will immediately say this is equal to zero if not don't worry about it the simplest way to say this see this is to write x as square root of h bar over 2m omega i think this is the overall uh, factor please check if i'm wrong times a plus a dag okay substitute this here what do you get <clears throat> the first order correction the nth eigen energy is equal to alpha times square root of h bar over 2m omega 0 times n0 a plus a dag n0 and this quantity is equal to 0 because a acting on n0 is proportional to n0 minus 1 and so the overlap of n0 and n0 minus 1 is 0 similarly a dagger acting on n0 is proportional to n0 plus 1 and the overlap of n0 and n0 plus 1 is also equal to 0 okay so you get a very curious result your first order correction to the nth eigen energies is equal to zero but it is possible to develop some physical intuition as to why this happens okay instead of looking at the same equation in uh, the energy basis let us plug in the uh, let us introduce a complete set of states and work this out in the coordinate basis so i can write this as an integral i can write this as an integral in the x space by introducing a complete set of states so en1 is equal to alpha times dx psi n star of x x psi n of x dx right that is what this means this i can write as dx x now notice that these are the unperturbed energy states right n0 states and the unperturbed energy 
states are eigen states of both the hamiltonian and parity in other words unperturbed eigen states have a definite parity so if i don't look at the x term if i forget the x term here there is a p square term and an x square term both of which is invariant under parity parity is x going to minus x which means the hamiltonian the parity operator share a common set of eigen states and you actually know from your simple harmonic oscillator uh, lectures that the ground state is parity even the first state first excited state is parity or the second excited state is parity even and so on and so forth it gives alternate but whether the parity of n is even or odd psi n0 mod square is always an even function okay which means x times psi n0 whole mod square is always an odd uh, it's an even function times an odd function and if you take this integral between minus infinity and infinity the product of an even times an odd function is always equal to zero okay so the first order correction to the uh, x term is equal to zero simply because our unperturbed eigen kits are parity eigen states and so psi mod square is always parity even so if, even if i put in an alpha x cube term for example it would still be equal to zero because the x cube term is also parity odd so if i have an x cube perturbation the first order correction to the energy levels will always be equal to zero but if i have for example an x to the fourth correction instead of an x term suppose if i have an alpha x to the fourth then my corrections to energies would not be equal to zero i would have to compute them. okay because those are x to the fourth is not an odd function it is an even function so that is how you uh, calculate the first order corrections to the energy just to complete this discussion let's also calculate the first order correction to the eigen kits so n to this order is n0 plus n1 which is equal to n0 plus So to calculate the first order term, I need to calculate this guy. So let us calculate this for the given case. The given case, this is equal to one over en zero minus en zero. H tilde is simply alpha. x is again square root of h bar over 2n omega 0 times i'm calculating m0 a plus a dagger n0 this term okay now this is an infinite sum because there is an infinite number of terms there are infinite number of bound states in the simple harmonic oscillator in other words i I should sum over all m not equal to n but notice that this matrix element can only be non-zero for certain values of m so let us calculate this so m0 a n0 a acting on n0 would give me square root of n m0 n0 minus one i should actually write n0 but I'm simply sticking with n because I don't care about uh, it. This is just a number. I don't care about n0 or n1, the correction. It is just n. 2 is 2. It doesn't matter what it is. Which means that this is only non zero if m equals n minus 1. Otherwise, this would be equal to 0. Okay? Similarly, Excuse me. The other term is M zero A dagger N zero, and this is equal to square root of M plus one. And this is only equal to zero if M M equals N plus one. Okay, 
So in other words, in, even though we have an infinite number of terms to calculate, there is only two terms that are not equal to zero. If I want to calculate the correction to the nth eigen level, this is equal to the only two terms that contribute are the level above it, which is uh, m equal to n plus one and the level below it, m equal to n minus one. So if I have to calculate the total correction, n one equals sum over m equal to n, I will uh, take this off, alpha square root of h bar over 2m omega times, the first term is square root of n divided by, in this case, m is n minus 1. So this is e n 0 minus e n minus 1 0. The second term is square root of n plus 1 times, sorry, uh, times the state m0, m0 in this case is n minus 1 plus square root of n plus 1 divided by e n0 minus e n plus 1 0 state n plus 1. Okay, so this is the correction to the This is the correction to the first order correction to the nth eigen ket of the simple harmonic oscillator because of the perturbation alpha x. So you can easily see that this difference between successive energy levels is h bar omega. This is obviously equal to minus h bar omega. So the first order correction here is square root of h bar over 2 m omega 0. times, I can pull out a 1 over h bar omega 0 and write this as square root of n, n minus 1 minus square root of n plus 1. So. Okay, so that is how you work this out. But this still leaves one question unanswered. Obviously, my energy levels, if I solve this problem exactly, I found out that the energy levels are all shifted by a constant amount. But the first order correction to the energy levels gives me zero. But I should capture what this constant is to understand what this constant term is. I have to calculate actually the second order correction to the energy. And it is a second order correction to the energy that will give me this constant, constant term uh, by which all the energy levels are shifted. We will understand how to calculate the second order corrections to the energy in the next lecture. Okay. So for today, I'll stop here. And please ask me if there is any questions.